Here. Let's knock first. We'll go to the cemetery if she's not here. Well, she is not here. As Elizabeth finished her last syllable, she heard a voice behind her. Who are you? That was an emaciated, dark-haired woman who asked. She glared at two unwelcome visitors in front of her. At the first sight, Sophie could already feel her negative emotions, waiting on her heart like a mountain. You want to join that ceremony, too? You hyenas scavenging rotten meat behind Albert Fairsang. We don't mean, hello, Miss Inessa. We want to stop Albert Fairsang. Once Alice caught those words, both of them could see a moment of consternation and relief on her face. She then again had her guard up. Why should I trust you? We know that Fairsang imprisoned Abel using work as an excuse, and forced him to perform that so-called the magic of omnipotence and omniscience. Abel then escaped from the mansion and came back home to seek help from you. But he was caught by Fairsang. We also know that a month ago he... Enough. Once Sophie mentioned that, Alice could not stop trembling. Sorry but she has no offense. In short, we came to the town yesterday. After knowing what is going on here, we think it needs to be stopped so we want to stop Albert Fairsang. You're people outside the town, aren't you? Do you really think that you two little girls can stop him? That's why we're here to see you. We want to know more about all of these. The more we know, the more we can do, including taking revenge on Fairsang for you. No. I mean, if you have already known what happened to Abel and me, then... Alice was surprised and delighted because of the sudden visitors, Sophie and Elizabeth. Sophie's words gave her hope. However, at the same time, she could not help imagining the consequences of their failure. As you said, we do not live here, so we don't need to worry about being isolated or exiled. If Fairsang does anything to us, our family and friends will not do nothing. Even if he is the king of the town, can he give orders to people outside the town? He couldn't. That's why he needed those confidentiality agreements. That's why he needs to keep the ceremony low-key, right? You can't imagine how far he could go. Then tell us, so that we can be well prepared before dealing with him. Miss Inessa. We would not have visited you if we had not been well aware of everything. Even if you are well aware of these, you should not come. You will regret your decision. Of course, we'll regret it. But we would have regretted it even more if we had not knocked on your door, and tried our best to stop the whole thing. So, please, let us in. Alice hesitated for a moment. Then she took out the keys and opened the door. Come in. Why did you think we wanted to join the ceremony? The town is not famous for tourists. And it doesn't have many tourists. The only reason why people come here, is the ceremony. How careless you are. You two are so recognizable here. Once Fairsang knows that you are here, he will keep an eye on you. You are worried about getting us involved in these. Is it because you're being watched? He must be watching me. He already knows you've come. He will get you soon. You shouldn't have come. Alice whispered at a softer, and softer voice, until Sophie could not hear her whispers clearly. Sophie and Elizabeth could really see how Albert influenced Alice. Now why don't you tell us about things that we don't know and that will be useful for our investigation. There is too much to tell. Take your time, then. We have all morning. Alice's condition was not stable. She was getting a panic attack again. What is the point of telling you? Abel is gone. How could you bring him back to me? Alice paced in the room with her head in her hands. Don't you want to save him? You knew you can't fight against Fairsang, but still, you did what you could do to help your brother, didn't you? Hen his men took my brother away from me. Not a single piece of cloth was covering his body. Not a single piece of skin of him was not wounded. He told me that he was going to die. He would die soon if he stayed in that mansion. His men came by dawn, and they took Abel by force. No matter what Abel and I did, they just took Abel away. And Fairsang, he just stood at the door and watched. I could only watch him leave. I couldn't save him. I could do nothing but watch him die and watch myself lose him. Alice was getting more and more agitated with her eyes turned red. She howled every single syllable out of her mouth. That scared Elizabeth a little bit. Sophie stood in front of Elizabeth, as she took a step closer to Alice. 
And then you gave up? You didn't. You tried to get revenge on Albert. You knew at the time that revenge would not change the past, but still you did it. I don't know what happened during your two weeks of recovery. I don't know what you've been through over the last two years, and what you have become, I'm not going to accuse you or ask you to do anything. I'm just asking, do you want to do something for Abel? It can be anything. Do you want to do something to comfort Abel's soul? Aye. At the time, you wanted to avenge Abel's death, so you took the risk of taking a reckless decision. However, now, you don't want to avenge your late brother at all? Then what do you want to do now? You want Fairsang, who killed Abel, to pay. But such thing just won't happen without a reason. The so-called karma doesn't always happen at the right time. No. Stop it. That's not what I want. I'm not waiting for any karma because I know it doesn't exist from the very beginning. The crew will bring ruin on themselves, whatever, it's just never the case. I tried and I failed. I can't try anymore. I can't do anything to Fersang at all. Even if I stab him with a knife, or whatever I do, it means nothing. And he, will remain looking down on me when I'm falling. Sophie approached Alice, who was crying with her face covered. So, you still want your revenge, you still want to make changes. How can I give up? Albert stepped over Abel's corpse and achieved success. He gained the power to control everyone. All of them stepped on my brother's body while worshipping Fersang. None of them cares about Abel, nor his cries for help. Then trust us. It's never someone else who makes the changes, but your own self. You know it, that's why you stabbed Fersang. If you want to put your last effort to make your brother rest in peace, then trust us, we will make Fersang get his comeuppance. Alice looked at Sophie in confusion. The calmness of this dark-haired, brown-eyed university girl moved Alice. She frowned and stared at Sophie's face. We will make Fersang get his comeuppance. Sure. If you fail, don't blame me for not warning you. If you are Fersang's another lie, don't blame me for being merciless. Got it. Sophie and Elizabeth gave Alice some time to calm down. They gave her some water and tissues, and waited for a while before Alice spoke. Where should I start? What we know is actually very fragmented, so we don't know which to ask first. Let's start from the beginning. It's the easiest way to connect the dots. First of all, from the most basic question, do you know what the Fairsang ceremony is? He claimed that it was, the magic of omnipotence and omniscience, which allowed people to communicate with gods. There were also other magics used in the ceremony for the best effect, according to Fersang. That night, Abel told me that, the ceremony was extremely dangerous, and that you might have contact with demons. Did he say anything else? Alice shook her head. It was understandable. It must be a mess at that time, and Alice would not have the time to ask anything else. I have not performed the ceremony successfully, so I am not sure what kind of effect he wanted exactly. You performed the ceremony before? After Abel's death, I was too naive. I went to Fersang, and you know what happened next? His personal doctor said I had a mood disorder. He sent a letter to my boss, forcing me to stay at home for recuperation. Then, they came. When Alice recalled that, she trembled and her breath became shorter. Elizabeth immediately embraced Alice's skinny body, stroking her back and whispering reassurances to her. It's all right. They're not here. They, they locked me in my room, sealed up the windows, turned off the lights, and brought me those machines. Every night they forced me to say the spell. It hurt a lot. I felt so dizzy, I couldn't understand anything. Elizabeth and Sophie looked at each other. This is way more severe than they could imagine. And then? Nothing happened. After two weeks, Fersang gave up. Alice hugged herself. The memories of those two weeks were a nightmare to her. It won't happen again, Miss Inessa. Nothing happened during the ceremony? Alice shook her head. I am different from Abel. Different? I've been thinking about this for a long time, why Abel? After his death, why did Fersang find you? What's so special about your family? Do you know that there were witches here before? Yes. Our ancestor had contact with the witches. I'm not sure if they were guards or what, but they learned witchcraft from the mouths of witches. However, our family failed to pass on most of the knowledges. 
Our grandmother told us that people in our family were able to bless people and do exorcism in the past. Now, what was left for Abel and me is the ability to sense the existence of ghosts and monsters more easily than normal people. A stronger psychic power, that leads to a successful ceremony? Abel was gifted, and we knew that he was special since he was small. After that, Fersang knew about it. Then Abel was hired with a high salary. I was tricked by that man. We were all tricked by Fersang. I shouldn't have done that. If I had been more capable, Abel would not have left me. Alice was crying again. How did Fersang know? Because of him, the one who escaped from everything. Farone? He ran away. He was the most capable one to help Abel, but he escaped. He ran away, and now he came to me and said he wanted to help. Help! Farone is fighting against his own father. He should have done that. He should have done this a long time ago, or Abel would not have died. At that moment, they heard a phone ringing. Not Sophie's nor Elizabeth's. They looked at the table at the same time. Alice's phone was ringing. Sophie walked over and checked the notification. Private caller. It must be him. I don't want to hear his voice. Sophie looked at the phone in her hand and decided to pick it up. Hello. Who are you? Where's Alice? What have you done to her? The voice on the other end was a voice of a young man. Hearing an unfamiliar voice, he became nervous and asked loudly. My name is Sophie Elf. I want to help Miss Inessa. How can I trust you? You're Faron Fairsang, right? My friend and I came to the town to investigate something and we learned about the past here. We have the same goal as you. A simple sentence won't mean a thing, Miss Elf. Please return the phone to Alice. Think. Why could I take your call for Miss Inessa? She's unstable and she doesn't want to hear your voice. I've heard the same excuse once before. I'm sorry, I can't believe you. Sophie looked to Alice and raised the phone in her hand. Alice shook head. It's really difficult to explain everything and gain your trust at the same time over the phone. Can we save our breath on this? I don't know if you know this, but I'm telling you, Abel Inessa died a month ago. Farone was silent. Sophie knew she was right. We want to stop Albert Fairsang, and Miss Inessa wants to avenge Abel's death. I think we all have the same purpose. Farone was silent for a while. I'm now on the train to Vosidon. I'll be there tomorrow afternoon. Please tell Alice that I will call her when I arrive for Zidin tomorrow. I'm afraid she won't answer your phone. I told you, she doesn't want to hear your voice. Here's the compromise. You're not living in the town, right? I guess you're staying in the inn. I'll be there as soon as possible when I arrive in Vosidin. So please wait for me in the inn. Then we can talk. Sure. Sophie hung up the phone. Did you hear that? Farone will be back tomorrow, and we can talk with him. I won't see him. I told him so. Therefore, he'll go to the inn and see us first. Then we'll tell you what we discuss. Fine. Do you hate him? Alice was silent for a long time. Then she shook her head gently. Maybe I shouldn't hate him. But... But, at the time, he... You think he could have done something, but he didn't. That's why Abel died. It's possible that Farone didn't even know about it. That's why you said he escaped, ran away. You transferred your hatred of Fairsang, of the cold-blooded townspeople, and of your powerless self to Farone, who had left the town? He saved Abel once, but could not keep him away from that place. And, also, Fairsang knew Abel's power because of him. Doesn't he think he's responsible for Abel's death? Aren't him sorry for anything? Seeing that Alice was getting agitated again, Elizabeth gestured for Sophie to stop. What about this? He's coming back tomorrow, isn't he? Let's go and see him together, shall we? It's not too late to find out what is his plan. Maybe he has his own reasons. I told you, I won't see him. If he comes back, his father will know. Fersang will do something. We will tell you what happened, then. I'll leave you our number, just in case. Have you kept anything of Abel? His belonging may be helpful. Yes, but I don't think they will help a lot. We'll see. What about Mitchell? Do you mind if our friend comes over, Miss Inessa? Make yourselves comfortable. I'm sure you have basic manners. Thank you. Elizabeth could see that Alice was physically and mentally exhausted, so she went to Alice's room on the first floor to have some peaceful time with Alice. Sophie called Mitchell and told him what was going on. Got it. Are you okay? 
Your voice doesn't sound good. Let's talk later. Sophie hung up the phone. She stood with arms akimbo and looked around in the Innes' house, which was full of photos. Basically, she could only see three people in the photos. The dark-haired, girl, the dark-haired, boy, and the red-haired, green-eyed boy. Alice, Abel and Farone. She could see that the photographs spanned a wide range of time, from when the three were children to when they were teenagers. She could tell that they had been really close. By just looking at those photos, she could imagine what a happy life they had. Sophie stared at the photos. As a witch, she could feel the emotion the photos carried. She stood in the living room for a while and sighed heavily. 